welcome to another exciting edition of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your MC Davo. With me today, we have Kells. Cheerio. We have Andy. Hello, little brainers. We have the Sensei Neil. Hey, everybody. We have, coming from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Ian. Ian, another one. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Pretty good. I'm doing wonderful. Yeah. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well on this frosty evening. It is cold. It is cold here in Northwest Arkansas. Arkansas. It is cold in, I don't know what chunk of Oklahoma that would be, the middle-ish part. It's, <laughs> it's cold. Try northeast. Sure, that works. <laughs> we're literally right next to you. Yeah, well. Have you not there. been to Tulsa, Davo? I've driven through it, and okay. I, there's a really good Jamaican restaurant there <laughs> that I really like. So nice. Sweet. Uh, and at the compound, the sensei's hidden compound it's frosty as well unless the volcano is kicking up enough geothermic power to keep you nice and toasty um well i mean that's on the inside yeah that's true so ian i think you're hosting today correct that's right davo whoa do you know the rules of this game uh my friend neil does neil take it away well the way the game works is each week we have a theme. And within that theme, we've got six categories, four questions each. Each question is worth 10 points with a few bonus points thrown in here and there. And then a final category, which is worth up to 100 points. And today's theme is... Punt Puri. Oh, so Punt Puri! In honor of the Punt Puri category that was created during the Ray Guy Memorial episode... I decided I was going to put together a game composed of some mini themes that didn't quite have enough to fill a whole episode. Um, Just some questions I've collected over the past year. So wow, each category is going to be a theme all its own with a few tie-ins between the categories. Finally, an episode where it's totally cool and I forget the theme. (laughs) This does play to your strengths. It really does. Are you a space cadet with a short attention span? Welcome to Punt Puri. Well, Andy, speaking of space cadets, our first category is, of course, science. It doesn't, no. doesn't have to be. Ian, you're a guest. And you, you could have you know, in done something fun. Andy, I know this is your favorite science. The science is astronomy. Oh. You ready to get started? Sure. I'm a cancer. I like long walks on the beach. I like uh, tender moments. You know. Wow. That's TMI. Just keep that to yourself. We're not that kind of podcast. (laughs) Well, before Davo goes off on even more personal matters, let's get to question number one. (laughs) What company was the principal subcontractor for the manufacturing of the James Webb Space Telescope? The parent company make most closely be associated with a household food preservation product once made in Muncie, Indiana. What? Really? Locked in. Locked in. I I want this to be true. (laughs) Maybe if you wish hard Uh, enough, Andy. I really want this to be true. And you're wanting the parent company? It's the same name. Give me the the common name between the two. (laughs) Yes. Oh, this is so bad. I'm going to look like a Nimrod right away. (laughs) You and me both, buddy. (laughs) I'm locked in. Zero faith in this answer. None. All righty. Everybody locked in? Sadly, yes. yes. Okay. Let's start with Dave. Wow. (laughs) I said Reynolds. Okay. And Kells? I said Ziploc. Okay. (laughs) Andy. Great. I said uh, <laughs> Tupperware, uh, and it's incident. That's what was wrong with the Hubble is they forgot to burp it before they took it. off. You got burped. They have to burp it. Mm-hmm. It's super. No yeah, there you go. What if I told you that the food preservation product was a type of mason jar? A bell. Close. Ball. Ball. There you go. The company is Ball Aerospace, 
were wow. owned by the Ball hmm. Corporation. They do not the make ball jars, but they are still the largest manufacturer of recyclable metal beverage containers. So basically every can of White Claw Devo drinks is probably made what? by ball. <laughs> That's interesting. Muncie, Indiana, right to my tummy. <laughs> I think they were mostly responsible for making the actual telescope part, and Grumman made the spacecraft part. So I don't know if I like when guests host. Not that Ian is a bad guy or anything, but it, it now Neil Certainly can just not laugh off at on us. The right foot. Yeah. Now Neil it's can not- just straight up laugh at our answers mm-hmm. when he's he tries at least a little bit when he's hosting to not give anything right. away. But now he just like <laughs> Ziploc. Ha <laughs> ha! Fool. <laughs> no, I was just picturing a spaceship made out of Ziploc bags, and it was pretty funny. Well, it would keep the oxygen in. I I understood what he was saying. It made sense to it. me. Yeah, I mean, keep the smells from getting a, out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You, you don't want space taste or smelling like old ribs. Nope. You know. Yeah, you do. Well, yeah, you know you the do. the International Space Station apparently smells terrible. I can imagine that's a lot of astronaut funk. Yeah. Over the years. Yeah. It only takes one malfunctioning toilet to oh. cause that. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Someone sneaks on that kimchi and it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Question number two. What Irish author and satirist described the two satellites of Mars with eerie similarity in 1726, some 151 years before they were discovered? Hmm. And I do have an easy mode. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Me, easy mode, yeah, please. please. Everybody wants the easy mode? Okay. This foretelling was featured in his most famous work, From the Island of Laputa. Keyword easy. <laughs> Some of them may be very easy modes. <laughs> no, that was, I, I imagine Island that was an easy of, mode if one was re- well read. Isn't that from Next Generation? <laughs> <laughs> The guys who spoke in metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, who would this I'm be? I'm totally guessing. I don't know. That's Luke. too early. That's too late. Oh, well, I'm a Nimrod. All right, I'm out. Um, I'm locked, locked in. in, but it's bad. Is that everybody locked? I'm La- locked. Where, I think. Andy, did you lock it? Yeah, I locked it. I thought that you were singing your lock in. I locked it a while ago. <laughs> All right. Kells, why don't you start us out? For uh, Gulliver's Travels, I went with Swift. And Andy? Same theory. Gulliver's Travels, Jonathan Swift. Davo. I also said Swift. Well, good job, guys. You're on the board. It was Jonathan Swift. Little little nugget about that. Kepler was reading the works of Galileo that came before him, and Galileo had devised a lot of anagrams and word puzzles in his work to try to disguise some of his findings, kind of like how da Vinci wrote backwards. Well, hmm. Kepler Kepler thought that something Galileo said was an anagram talking about the moons of Mars. So, um, huh. I'll have to I'd have to pull up the original text, but no, that's cool. Basically, he was extrapolating something that was completely off base. Galileo wasn't even talking about Mars, but <laughs> okay. Question number three in astronomy: What automotive manufacturer has used a logo featuring the Pleiades star cluster, also known as M forty five, since nineteen fifty three? And as a bonus, how many stars are featured on the logo? I'm locked in. I'm questioning myself. Okay, I'm, I'm locked, locked in. in. Andy, what you got? Uh, Subaru. I have no idea how many stars. I'm guessing five. And Devo? I also said Subaru and five. Nope. Kells? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Andy just said nope. <laughs> No, I said, like, I'm excited. Answer. Like, my guess might be right. Uh, I said Subaru, and I said six. Okay, so we're wrong. Kells, why do you think it's six? 
Yeah, kill us. I, I don't know. Prove was, your worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, it's... four didn't seem like enough. Like, seven seemed like too much. Was six, Dr. J, hey, you know, Bill Russell. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, the answer is Subaru. So everyone got the main part of the question. Kells did get the bonus. Oh. If, if not for the wrong reasons. Um, if, <laughs> if you know another name of the Pleiades cluster, it would be the Seven Sisters. Mm-hmm. But there are actually only six stars due to a Japanese tradition of saying that one of the sisters was invisible. So there are only six stars oh, wow. in the Subaru logo. That's cool. Okay. Hmm. Uh, just for future reference, Ian, we don't have to show our work on the show. Right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so answers, even if they come organically, are still acceptable. Mm-hmm. Still worth the same points. Yeah. <laughs> Question number four. What Italian monk was likely the first to propose that seemingly fixed stars in the night sky were in fact other suns with their own planets? Among other beliefs, he was eventually burned at the stake for heresy in 1600 as he challenged many doctrines of the Catholic Church. And I do have an easy mode. Take it. Oh, I'll take that easy mode. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Uh, easy mode for me. I almost vetoed this question until I saw the easy mode. (laughs) That's what made it. My easy mode is he shares a last name with a 2009 Sasha Baron Cohen mockumentary. Really? Locked in. I'm locked in. This makes no sense. And I'm going to be done. Locked in. All righty. Devo, who is that Italian monk? I sure hope it's not Ali G. Because I said uh, I said Borat. <laughs> That's an answer. Gels? It is. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. <laughs> Andy? I said Bruno as well, though I'm not singing it. <laughs> All righty. Well, Kells and Andy both got it right. It is Giordano Bruno. Sure. Hmm. Sorry, Devo. Don't apologize I, for my stupidity. I, I could have thrown an <laughs> Encanto question in there, but I figured that'd be a little, little more easy. All right, Neil, what are the scores? A, shares a last name with the longest reigning WWE champion of all time. I don't, I don't, I don't, oh, yeah. God. That's interesting. Yeah. Bruno San Martino. I would have gotten it then. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> At the end of category one, Devo has 15, Andy 20, and Kells has 25. Oh, I'm still in it. In the first round, yeah. Well, you don't, I mean, we don't really have an elimination game. Yeah. Devo, you mean you're still... <laughs> oh, I could stay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least, at least until the sudden death round starts. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Category two. It's going to be food and drink. I oh, like that. I like Devo, those you like things. Food and drink? I like food and I do like to drink. Oh, I like drinks. I <laughs> yes. am drinking. What? Yes. I have a problem, in fact. <laughs> Turns out Freud was right. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of booze, question number one. What red Italian wine grape is the singular component of Brunello de Montalcino and Rosso de Montalcino? Its name is a literal translation of the Latin for the blood of Jupiter. Gosh, I can't believe I don't know this off the top of my head. I'm going through all the grape names I know. Is Welch a grape name? Hmm. All right, locked in. This is a bad day for me, I think. All right, I have... (laughs) guys are going to laugh. All right. I don't know why this is... I'm locked in. If you say Concord, we're going to be upset. (laughs) (laughs) Kels, what's your answer? I said Sangria, no? Oh, oh, man, I'm close. Andy? I said sangria. And David? I said muscadine. (laughs) (laughs) The job of the chimney sweep comes with a Ah, great deal of... All y'all get X's on your paper. (laughs) I'm from muscadine, Iowa, where we grow the good grapes. (laughs) Kels and Andy, you guys were close. But the grape in question here is Sangiovese or uh, Sanguis Jovis. 
So oh, if you've ever had yeah. a Chianti, you have okay. had Sangiovese. Somebody help. Why did I, Sangria is something along those lines, it, though, isn't it? It's a Spanish the, drink that mixes wine with oh, uh, that's, fruit. Okay. Mm. Okay. And it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Same etymology, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, question two. Thurl Ravenscroft is the uncredited performer of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, and the iconic voice of Kellogg's Tony the Tiger from 1953 to 2005. What other cereal brand did Ravenscroft lend his voice to during the 1950s, portraying Ooh. another feline, Champy the Lion? That sounds vaguely familiar. It does. I don't want to say that. There it is. Pretty sure I got this. Uh, it was in the 50s, so it might be the same deal. Um, I'm locked in. Locked in. Okay, Andy, how about you lead us off? If I'm thinking about this correctly, Champy was a puppet, and he was advertising Wheaties. Davo? I said Post Toasties. Oh, I bet that's Kellis. what it is. I went with the... The Breakfast of Champions, uh, Wheaties. It's probably Wheaties, then. Correct answer is Wheaties. No Ooh. kidding. Andy, you're Kels- right. He was a creepy puppet. It's a creepy puppet. I don't know where I've seen this, <laughs> this <laughs> advertisement. I've seen the ad before, either in my childhood. Probably I can't as a young this. boy. Probably as a young boy. <laughs> the day I graduated WG. college was the first time I experienced <laughs> Champion the Lion. Well, you, you have to remember, when you grew up around Chicago... WGN in the 1970s was network television in the late 1950s. That's true. Yeah. Question number three. What fast casual restaurant chain based in New York City derives its name from the carnival ride that Sandy and Danny enter during the song You're the One That I Want in the 1978 movie Grease? Oh. Like that? Oh, that's not right. No. I... But it I, sounds like a carnival ride, though. I'm guessing I have a carnival ride that sounds like food, so <laughs> that's what I'm going with. I have no idea. Dave, are you locked in? No. Because one answer popped into my head, and I don't think it's right. But that hasn't stopped me all game right. long. <laughs> right. Carnival ride. Devo, this is, you know, your field of expertise. Circus. Circus is not a carnival. Carny. Carnies and tights. Oh, <laughs> That's what you. you're into. Dirty, dirty It's dog. not Red Robins. <laughs> I wish would have thought of that. I'm locked in. I'm just going to put an X on my paper. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that X, Dave. I'll go first. Sparrow. Kells? I said Sizzler. Andy? One of my favorite carnival rides as a kid was the Scrambler. So after you've had a sweep, you might get some mild cramps. The restaurant I'm looking for here is Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Oh, the thing where they're doing. That's called the Shake Shack. They walk into that that little doorway. It says Shake Shack. I have never been a fan of Grease. You mean the movie? It every day. I was about to say, you can sell yeah, it. The, No, no. Gr- <laughs> Grease, as one of the, my main food sources, is totally legit. <laughs> it's in that food pyramid thing. It's what holds all the bricks together. It's the glue. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the glue that holds the pyramid together. All right. Let's finish out this category with question number four. What fast food chain was sued by Slipknot in 2005 for unlawfully using the band's trademark likeness? The fictional band known as Cock Rock, spelled C-O-Q-R-O-Q, wore individualized chicken masks and performed for a massive advertising campaign for a new poultry product. If you give me the product, I'll give you a five-point bonus. A new poultry? Like that? Like that? I got nothing on this. I'm going to try to game the question a little bit. This will be fun. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's just all right. You know, it's the support from the family. That's we're a family and we support each other. It is. This 
doesn't feel like something Chick Fil A would do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not Slipknot. <laughs> not cock rock. No cock not rock. Cock rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locked in. Okay, Kells, lead us off. Say KFC in the double down. Mm. Mm. Andy. Good one. I'm thinking Waffle House because you know what? They don't care. You want a piece of this? Fine. Come at me. Um, and I'm guessing the product is is a product that uh, that Kells introduced me to. Uh, chicken and waffles. Mm. Mm. Devo? All right, Neil. Check out this logic. You ready? <laughs> All right. So Ian said that it was spelled C-O-Q-R-O-Q. So I went with Quiznos. All I'm trying to say is... Thanks. Nope. Nope. He was, he was queuing it up when you were explaining. I was thinking. Yeah. As soon as... Yeah. We're sweeping my gun to play. Thinking, let me get the sweep going. Over the house. Poised. <laughs> God. You, you could try for the bonus if you want, Devo. Well, obviously, yeah. it's the... Quiznos chicken cordon blue sandwich. All I'm trying to say is. Yeah. <laughs> well, after this, you guys need to go watch the commercial in question, but Cock Rock was a band featured in Burger King's commercial for chicken fries. Huh. Oh, those? Really? I do. Yeah. Those aren't right. terrible. <sighs> They're not terrible. I enjoy them sometimes. Yeah. It's better than those uh, little, uh, what are those Quiznos creatures called? Sponge monkeys? You remember those commercials? <laughs> what? Sponge yeah. monkeys? Neil, you, know, you need to look those up. No, I don't What's think I do. Oh, you mean the little <laughs> yeah. mascot thing they had? Yeah, they look like yeah. the little uh, oh, yeah, marsupials. Uh, that that made me never. I think they're called sponge monkeys. <laughs> I've boycotted Quiznos <laughs> forever <laughs> after seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I ever went before, but. So your boy anyway. had a lot of impact. <laughs> oh, I remember this. Oh yeah, this. Why did they think this is going to get you business? Oh yeah, <laughs> because they told oh, them. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not making this up. Oh, now, yes, yeah. there they are. I remember. I repressed them now. that. I repressed that. Yeah. All right. At the end of category two, Devo still we has fifteen points. We don't need to points. know what's going no. on. With <laughs> no, this, score. this way we do it. Devo was do the scores oh, after every okay. category. Right on. Okay. And so, like I was saying, Devo still has fifteen points. Andy has thirty, and Kells has thirty-five. It's anybody's game. It's anybody's game. Okay, we're we're brushing the dust off. We're going into a new round here. Category is pop culture. All right. That's I don't know all if you've listened to the show, guys. but we're totally up on that pop culture. Pop right. culture. Well, I, I am tell down you with the kids. Word to your mother. <laughs> what a timely Word. reference, Andy. There are some yeah. tie-ins. So, okay. Question okay. one: What fast food restaurant is purportedly named after the lead character in the 1972 Oscar Best Picture winner? I do have an easy mode. 1972. So- so when you say 72, you mean the movie it, that got the award? It won, it won the 1972 Oscar Best Picture. The movie was from 1971. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like easy so, mode because I want to get a question right. Hold on. Let me, yes. I, I need to work this out first off. Oh, I'm not sure. Of course you are. It just took me a second. I had to I, get that, uh, that qualifier. I got uh, this. Andy is is Randall P. McMurphy's. <laughs> <laughs> I'd eat there. <laughs> this easy mode might not even help me, but I gotta try it. It probably will, man. Andy, do you want the easy mode? Give me one more. I'm just uh... you going through all of the movies that won Best Picture in the set. Godfather, Godfather. I, yeah, it could be a James Bond movie. Godfather, <laughs> what another gangster movie? Apocalypse. Wow, now. really? <laughs> All right. So is everybody else like no? Some because I, I I'm waiting I, for easy mode. Uh, Hurry your ass up! I'm pretty sure <laughs> I have the best picture, but I can't come up with the 
I'm pretty sure I do. And I like this movie. Okay. Kills uh, and I like credulous. this actor. But I can't come up with the guy's name in the movie. Kills is like, um, you got the best picture? No, 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 no. I was like, I figured the name of this character in this movie for me are synonymous. And I had to I'm wondering if I got the wrong movie. Buckaroo Bonsai. If it's Vito, <laughs> then you're wrong. <laughs> Vito. Eat a Vito. Oh, wait a minute. I'm locked in. Oh, there it is. <sighs> wow. There it is. There it is. God, how did I? Oh, I can't believe. Yeah, there it okay. is. Easy mode for Devo. Gene Hackman won best actor for this yes! role. I'm okay, right. I'm locked in. I wouldn't have put those two things together in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Andy, what do you have? The movie is The French Connection, mm-hmm. and the character that Gene Hackman played, his nickname was Popeye. So I'm going with Popeye's Chicken. Okay. And Devo? Uh, Popeye's. And Kels? Popeye's. Correct answer is Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits. I Good always job. thought that Popeye's was named in honor of the delightful sailor. I did too. Yeah, too. Not. Well, yeah, if wow. you ever ever go look at a Popeye sign, you'll notice there is no apostrophe. It is oh. strangely not a possessive. It's just Popeyes. Oh. Wow. Okay. And they never. I don't think have they ever used the. And they've never used the cartoon character Popeye. I don't believe. Hmm. Okay. I, I guess I just made a ridiculous assumption. Even on my paper, it was possessive. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the French Connection considered the first film that had a major car chase? A uh, 100% illegal car chase? Yes. Yeah. Gonzo <laughs> filmmaking, no permits, those cars that he's narrowly missing, he's narrowly missing. <laughs> wow. Awesome movie. Gene Hackman's great in everything, even Superman. Well, let's not go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. In the first issue of Daredevil from 1963, young Matt Murdock saves an elderly man from the path of an oncoming truck, only to be blinded by a radioactive isotope that falls from the vehicle's cargo. Some 20 years later, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird paid homage to this origin story by extrapolating that the isotope went on to collide with a pedestrian carrying four pets. What comic did Eastman and Laird develop? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Devo, I had an easy mode if you really needed it, and I said they are not amphibians. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got, Devo? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Kells? Donatello is my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Andy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right, good job. That is the correct answer. Question three. Who are the only two characters portrayed in The Simpsons with ten fingers? Whoa. Wow, that's interesting. With ten fingers. I just gotta be able to. Is this five points each or you gotta get them both? I'll do five points each. I'll give you five points each, but if you get one, you'll probably get the other. I'm locked in. Nah, I'm gonna roll with them. Um I'm locked in. Debo, you've already doubled your score in this round. (laughs) <laughs> Give me some pop culture, baby. <laughs> I'm I'm locked in. I got nothing. Kells? I said uh, Mr. Burns and Waylon Smithers. Andy? Barney and Mo. Devo? I said God and the devil, but in parentheses, I put Matt Groening. Oh! Okay, Devo, good. you saved everyone from a sweep. That's but- good. It is God and Jesus. Okay. See, you know what's interesting, Devo? I Hmm. thought of God, um, but I couldn't come up when he said a pair. I couldn't come up with anybody that would go with God. That's right. Jesus has been in there. Duh. (laughs) Maybe we need another theology episode. (laughs) Yeah, we really do. (laughs) You know, there's actually three of them. (laughs) (laughs) Easy mode. Think Clapton, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay let's round out pop culture with question number four who is credited under the alias nils schoberg 
as a songwriter alongside Calvin Harris on the 2016 hit This Is What You Came For, featuring Rihanna. Locked in. I want to, I know th- I did this right away. I want to give a shout out to friend of the show, Corey, who's a big fan. Just letting you know, Corey, I got this because of you. Corey's a big fan of you or of this song? Of this, well, of this artist. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't even know if I know this song. I don't know the song. I just know the pseudonym. I'm going to punt. I'm locked in. Andy? It's Taylor Swift. Dave Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Uh, Kick uh, is away. There's uh, a high, twisting, uh, hang time uh, spiral. It just makes him so happy. <laughs> Kells? Art Garfunkel. Whoa. Kells, if I were to tell you that these two were dating at the time, would that have helped? Nope. Well, it is Taylor Swift. Andy's right. She, she dated Art Garfunkel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs to turn our fuck at some point. It's a weird thing. <laughs> it was the red period. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At the end of category three, Davo has 35 points. Yay! Kels has 55 and Andy has 60. All righty. Let's move into category four. This one is American politics. No. Great. You guys live in America. <laughs> you do too, and you don't know. No, mm, save it. Whoa, save it. someone's oh, back. Wow. Wow. Save it. All right, all right. Let's let's get through this first one, and we'll see. We'll see how we feel. Provide the common name for this father and son pair. The father okay. was a physician and poet who, among other things, popularized the term anesthesia and wrote the poem "Old Ironsides." The second. The son was a jurist and legal scholar who wrote an opinion that popularized the analogy of shouting fire in a crowded theater. He also holds the distinction of being the oldest justice to serve on the Supreme Court. Locked in. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Father and son, you say. I'd really, really Father like, uh, like uh, another punt. That would be really cool. <laughs> I have no idea. Neither do I. Uh, God. I'm locked in. No, that was the Simpsons answer. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. One of the few I've gotten kind of right. <laughs> yeah, I'm locked in. Okay. Davo starts off. Marshall. Kells? Guthrie. <laughs> and Whoa. Andy. Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. and Jr. And ironically, oh. Jr. as a Supreme Court justice was often called W. <laughs> really? Are you no. serious? I didn't think so. <laughs> Same middle name. I thought that was fun. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool, though, if it was? Hey, W. W. Well, aside from the nugget, Andy got it all right there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't accept substitution nuggets here. 100% <laughs> trivia. Thank you. Was it pure Oliver trivia Wendell nuggets? Holmes. Oh boy, Ian, you're killing me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's okay. And do you know what uh, old Ironsides helped do? The poem, you mean? Yes. Um, I know it was the name of a a frigate. What did it help? To... But no idea. You're pretty much there. It it was an influential piece of uh, literature that started the preservation of the USS constitution. Oh, okay. So, oh, wow. Cool. That's that right. was like the 1830s maybe. Okay. Let's stick with the court here and go no. to question two. Who was the last chief justice of the Supreme court to serve in an elective office before nomination to the court? He previously served as governor of California. Boy, I forgot Reagan was a chief justice. <laughs> Locked in. God bless. Locked in? Genuinely have no clue. I'm locked in. No, it's not him. I know it's not the one I re- I answered. I'm getting to where I'm decoratively uh, designing my X's on my paper. Um, Let's see. Did 
Did I start with Kells last? No, no. Okay, Kells. <laughs> Uh, I, when you first started the question, I, I thought Taft, but you threw in the governor part, and I straight up don't know. So I just threw Warren out there. Just threw Warren out there. Andy? Unbelievable. Does that, does that make you mad, Andy? Selected by Eisenhower, <laughs> Chief Justice Earl Warren. Wow. <laughs> I just just randomly grabbed the right one. Why not? Devo. So everything Kells just said applied to me, except for the part where he got the right answer. <laughs> I stopped at Taft and gave up. Oh. I have to admit, if he wouldn't have brought up governor of California, I was thinking Taft as well. And then I remembered Chief Justice Warren in the Warren court. That's well, just... Taft. Taft is... Very similar, but I said before nomination, so Taft would be the opposite. Oh, yeah. Right? Didn't he come after? Yeah, yes. yeah, of course. Thank yeah. you for the uh, shame yeah. nugget on God. top of my already <laughs> right. shame-filled heart. I was thinking Salmon <laughs> Chase, but that too would be, yeah, that's wrong. Thanks, yes, Andy. the correct answer, Andy, is Earl Warren. Kells you knew it, it by heart. Kells messes around, gets a triple-double, and... <laughs> So I'm cube just now. here. I'm just here. <laughs> Question three. Name the 20th century politician and Democratic presidential candidate who shared his name with his grandfather, the 23rd vice president of the United States under Grover Cleveland. I do have an easy mode. Please. I'll take it. Locked in. I don't know who Cleveland's. Yeah. Um, easy mode. He was a me. Muppet. Both Grover and the vice president were both Muppets. Andy, are you taking easy mode? No, I'm locked in. You're locked in? Okay. So for Davo and Kells, he lost two campaigns in landslide elections to Dwight Eisenhower in 1952 and 1956. Locked in? Locked in. Okay. Andy, start us off. Stevenson. (laughs) Davo? Stevenson. And Kels. Adlai Stevenson. Yep. Yep, he comes up on the show a lot, I feel like. Not often enough, probably. Not often enough. Usually has wrong answers, but but yes, his grandfather. Everybody likes him some Adlai. <laughs> I got that from Golden Girls. <laughs> it's ingrained in my memory because of Golden Girls. However you get there, man. You're yep. so weird yeah, sometimes, Kels. It really is. You're so, <laughs> You're so weird. I know. <laughs> what what I'm enjoying the most, though, is I can just feel Davo getting more and more pissed. I'm glad you're enjoying else feel that? that. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> when it gets quiet. Well, it's not there. my intention, but, you know. No, I'm not. No, you're no, fine. Things go. It's all fine. You're fine. It's all fine. You're good. It's fine. Do it live. all right let's finish this category with question four delivered on may 31st 2017 what is the name of the lead ship in her class that is the largest warship ever produced this aircraft carrier replaced the decommissioned uss enterprise i do have an easy mode i'll take it Uh, i'll take it as well Okay, I'm locked in. I thought you were asking for the name of the class, which I couldn't do, but you're asking for the name of the first ship of this class, locked in. Yes, I believe they share the same name, though. Ooh, yeah, Andy. Okay. Ha! <laughs> 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 All right. I'm, go- I'm locked in. I think I know what we're talking about, but I didn't know that was the name of the class. Okay, Andy's locked in. Easy mode is... It's named for a former president who enlisted in the U.S. Naval Reserve following the attack on Pearl Harbor. Oh, it could be two of them then. Shit. I think there's only one that fits this criteria. Let me think here. I wish I could talk this out. I'm locked in. (laughs) If, If you like, Andy. Is everybody locked in? Nah. Um. 
<laughs> Not that I can do anything about it. I'm locked in already, but I'm gonna lock in. Okay. I think I'm right now I think about it. Devo. Reagan. Kells. Seth Carter. And Andy. See, that's what got me hung up. It's it's definitely not Reagan. Sure. I don't believe he right. was in the reserves. Because f- me, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, yeah. Carter was a Navy man. But I think and Car- so Carter and Bush were both Navy men. But, did you not say um, Navy? They, he did. And this is what got me hung up when he said oh. the Navy <laughs> thing. I went, with, I went with Ford. I think you're right. So, but, yes, Carter was in the Navy, and I said the Naval Reserve. So right. And I, so that's why I started World feeling like, President Gerald R. Ford yes. is in the Naval Reserve. So it's the USS Andy. Gerald R. Ford. I was nice. right so that. Ian has heard this, boat. but we actually, we actually had a question about this in yeah. the last episode. I was oh. going to write that because it was in the last episode. <laughs> It's pretty cool. Not not about that ship. It was about the the next ship coming up. I think in that class. Neil, what are our scores? No. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> no. Davo. Well, Davo's score. Uh, I'm sorry, back to Davo. We can we I can bleep it out and post. Bleep it out, please. Just <laughs> edit that. Just sh- <laughs> Davo is chugging along towards the Allison line with 40 points. Kells has 70. And Andy has 95. Ooh. It's anybody's game. No. <laughs> no <laughs> <lie to me. laughs> Dave, oh, just <laughs> I, I thought I was going to help you with food and drink, but. I did too. I was Here, excited. Here's, here's a category. Friggin' Quiznos. <laughs> what even Quiznos? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What wine do I drink with Quiznos? How do Quiznos. I know? <laughs> No sponge monkeys here. No sponge monkeys. I want to God sponge monkeys. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, the next category is sports. How's that? I stand a better. Uh, maybe. I stand an even chance. And even better, they're not Neil sports. These are all the big four sports. These are all okay. real American sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no cricket to be found. None of that cricket BS. No yachting. No America. What the Cup. hell? It's a boat. Who cares? <laughs> exactly. This is America. Well, speaking of America, question one. Somebody's Dubbed wearing out their Canada's... welcome pretty quickly. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what I meant to say is, <laughs> no, just carry I love on, your carry questions, on, Sensei. I do too. I'm a big fan. Don't let him scare you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guest here. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Question one: Dubbed Canada's Babe Ruth, this man spent most of his career playing with the St. Louis Browns. He was the second person in Major League history to win the Triple Crown, and he boasts the sixth highest single season batting average of all time at .435. Whoa. And I do have several easy modes. Several? several? Well, let me dip into those easy modes then. <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Easy mode for me. Easy mode? Okay. I'll say this one is worth seven. Okay. Um, first easy mode. He shares his name with the 47th Speaker of the House, representing his <laughs> northern Boston, Massachusetts district for 34 years. 47th Speaker of the House. Yeah, I would need You to tell me one. when you want the easy, easy mode. <laughs> easy, easy, please. I've got to guess. I'm locked in. What's, what's this next easy mode for a pat on the back? Is it I'll, worth points? I'll give you five on the next one. Yay. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll take the next one. I'm please. feeling kind. Thank you. Okay, so Andy's locked in? Okay. Easy, easy mode. He is probably best known for his opposition to Ronald Reagan's domestic policies. Yes! Though the two were friends after, quote, 6 p.m. The baseball player was? Sorry, the, the 47th <laughs> speaker of the house <laughs> who shares his name. Okay. So in a way, yes. I've never heard of this ball player, but I knew who the 47th speaker was. Dave, well, you got anything on this? No. Same. Oh. But I'm locked in with something. <laughs> this this has been just torture. Love having you, Ian. Please come back again. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
not your fault at all. No, yeah. it's my own idiot brain. You should um, still play more game. I'm like kind of running out a little bit. <laughs> don't, don't crush well, it. If, if, we're if, near the warning uh, track, if anything. It, yeah. <laughs> track's coming up. Dalo can miss, can only miss two if he wants to break the Allison line. Yep, and this is, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> when you put it that way. <laughs> I'm locked in. Okay. Dave O, what's your answer? O'Neal. Kells? Hornsby. And Andy. Tip O'Neal. What? Correct answer is Hornsby. No, Tip O'Neal. <laughs> oh, <O'Neal. laughs> oh, Ian. Oh, Ian. I would have had to dip into the pen budget if that... If <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Dave. You're on the board. Woot. Back in the day when a Republican and a Democrat could go head to head all week, then on Friday night get drunk together. That's when politics times. are politics. Yeah. I I think if you can't share a drink with somebody after a long day of, of disagreement, they're not worth talking to. Yep. Mm. Okay. Question two. Name three of the top five NFL wide receivers in terms of receiving yards who have played their entire careers with one team. Oh, that's a scratch. Okay. If you give me three, I'll give you the full credit. If you give me each additional after that, I'll give you two more points each. So they have to do all three to get anything? Eh, let's just make them, let's do, make four, them all. Let's do four points each. Four points each. I'm locked in. I'm not giving this much thought because I don't know. Okay, I got my five. So I'm going to name five, not three. You can name as many as you like. Four points each is worth 20 points. Oh, okay. All right, this is decent enough. I'm like them. Okay. Kells, what do you have? Isaac Bruce, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Chris Carter. Okay. Andy? Well, I got one on my list. Michael Irvin, Jerry Rice, and Marvin uh, Harrison. And David. Uh, Marvin Harrison, Calvin Johnson, Tory Holt, Steve Largent, and Tim Brown. Okay. I'll I'll read off the list here. In terms of, I think these are in alphabetical order of team. No, wait, hold on. I've got them in order of yards here. Number one of this criteria, Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona Cardinals. Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne with the Colts. Steve Largent with the Seahawks. And Heinz Ward with the Steelers. I always forget about about Heinz Ward. Ward. A lot of those players I heard did kind of play out their sunset years in other places. Oh, Brown was a buccaneer for a little bit. Yeah, I was yeah. he went to Tampa. Jerry Dang Rice was. It. What Jerry about Rice Michael was Irvin? Wasn't he always he just a cowboy? And what'd you say, Andy? Michael Irvin? Who did he play for other than the, the Cowboys? He might not. He might not He's have. Not he didn't make the list. list. Yeah. Oh, God, I thought for sure he would have been. I thought Calvin Johnson had more yards than that. No, his career was cut short. Was a lot of these short. guys played for twelve plus Long years. Time. Yeah. I was saying Jerry Rice had like two stops. Torrey Holt? Did he play for more than one team? I believe so, yards, and though. I think he wouldn't have. Well, I he think he was below okay. Heinz Ward, too. Okay. Mm. Dang it. So who who scored what on that one? I think I got eight. I got eight. And Andy got four, I think. I got four. Okay. Okay. Question three. Who is the only MLB player to win the MVP in both the AL and the NL? Hmm. It should have been Ray Guy. Just because. <laughs> I can do an easy mode if you want. Please. I'll take the easy mode. I'll take easy mode. Okay. He won his awards with the Cincinnati Reds and the Baltimore Orioles. I was right. I didn't need the damn easy mode. I'm locked in. Like what? It? Dang it. What two teams? Andy, I have an easy, easy mode if you need it. Yes, please. You get an attaboy if you get it right. <laughs> Do you want me to repeat the teams before I give you that? or What are the teams again? The Orioles? Cincinnati Reds and the Baltimore Orioles. Wait a minute. This is MLB? 
Why yeah, did I? No, it's, it's NFL. <laughs> what did you think it was, Andy? A L N N L. I don't know no why I've been emails. thinking NFL the whole time. God, even I got the theme it was Fran wrong. Fran Tarkenton, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Gafford. <laughs> I just want to point out that those shame nuggets didn't come from me. I know. Well, they were well deserved that time. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. And it's Cal Ripken Jr. Stop it. It's Rip Calvin. I'm locked Jr. in. I know. It's, it's got to be this guy. I'm locked in. Uh, okay, Andy, what's your answer? Frank Robinson. Davo. Frank Robinson. And Kells. Robinson, comma, Frank. All right. Everybody got it. Didn't need the easy mode. <laughs> believe in yourself. And again, we, on behalf of Brain Little, I want to apologize to the Robinson family for the actions hey. of Devo. Hey. Yeah. No I kidding. wasn't going to say nothing, but I thought it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but he can't hurt it's him in anymore. in our thoughts and prayers. Yeah, he can't be. He can't, hey. he can't hurt him anymore. He can't hurt him anymore. <laughs> Fab Five Freddy is alive and takes, kicking. Wow. He's stop it. Yeah, you stop beside it. Your, beside your best attempts. <laughs> Question number four to finish off sports. Oddly, who is the only University of Kansas Jayhawks men's basketball coach with a losing record? Oddly. Ray Guy. When I start caring about rock chalk. <laughs> Bang. Um... <laughs> Locked in. The only one with a losing record. What would be ironic about this? Hmm. Okay. It was Professor Mr. Winslot. That's what was ironic. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Um, locked in. Victor Winslot. <laughs> Davo? Naismith. Kells. Dr. James Naismith. And Andy. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. <laughs> Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. You don't normally see that in college basketball, but it's pretty no. cool when it happens. You get kicked out of the game if you, you get kicked straight out. <laughs> well, I included the word oddly because it was the inventor of basketball, Dr. James Naismith. Hmm. Okay, as we finish round five, what are our scores, Neil? Our scores are Devo with 68 points, Kells with 93, and Andy with 111. Kells is catching me. <laughs> Slowly. By category Come nine, on. I'll catch all of you. Come on, music. <laughs> let's just put this to bed. You know, I thought about music, but <sighs> not tonight, Andy. Thanks. But you might also like this category. It is social studies. Come oh, on, dude. Really? This is a punt puri of all other punt puris put together. Question number one here. What is the term for the rectangular emblem placed in the upper left corner of a flag that often contains a symbol of national unity? For example, on the flag of the United States, the blue field with 50 white stars fits this description. And I do have an easy mode. I won't hit the Allison line if I take it. But... I will get it wrong if I don't at least. Mm, oh. I think I know this. I, I got to take the easy mode. Forget the Allison I'm, I'm get, I'll in. get to it in sudden death. Um, Actually, I think this, Devo, you can. If you get the next oh. three correct, you'll. Oh, yeah. I'll squeak by. Yes. Yeah. Come on. I'm locked in. Super easy mode. The easy mode is, Ian, give me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Kels, did you say you're locked in? Yes, I'm locked in. Okay. Andy, were you locked in? Locked in. Okay. Easy mode for Devo. This term shares a name with the administrative divisions of Switzerland and the home of an American professional sporting hall of fame. Oh, yes. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for for the easy mode. You, you frightened me at the first part of the easy mode. Yeah, I was like, ooh, I don't think this is <laughs> No, I got this wrong because I knew, I knew the easy mode had to be this. Name... With the home of an American Sports Hall of Fame. Home of the Brave. Right on. It's Atlanta. Oh, that's the Braves. Never mind. See, I would have yeah. done better with the Switzerland crew. Right. 
through. Of course you would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy, this is bad. So if you wanted to uh, throw Dave a bone, you could give him an easy no. mode for an extra easy mode for two points no. and tell him which Hall of Fame. Yeah, why don't we do that? <laughs> I don't want your how, pity. How you, want to break, it, you want to break? You want to break? I got it. Three points. Let's make it. I, no, three I got points, it. David. I okay. got it. All right. Okay. I got it. Because I, I got it. Okay. Okay. What do you got, David? Canton. And Kels. It sure ain't Cooperstown. It's Canton. <laughs> and Andy. Canton. Canton is correct. Let me backtrack a little bit. I was a little more vehement. I will take a little pity. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> But I, I finally figured out my brain. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, so, weird little, so that was I easy mode for everybody? Out my brain. Everybody take easy mode or was it just, it was just Dave? Just Dave Okay. Just me, man. I'm Sorry. playing for me, not for anything else. <laughs> I gotta be me. Yeah, the political divisions of Switzerland, that's just something that has just stuck in my head for decades. I don't know why. That's fair. Instead of states, they have count cantons. Probably, I'm guessing it's the same root word as county. I would guess. If you were to look into it. Right. Question two. Without looking down, what is the only country you can spell in the English language with a single line of the QWERTY keyboard? I do have an easy mode. Locked in. Wow. I think Andy went down. I did not. Actually, uh, I, my keyboard's in a drawer, and mine's is like on the other side of the table. Uh, speak to me. Was that, that a cat? cat? Yeah, my cat. My <laughs> she cat's to me crazy. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> She talks on the right on time. That I was great. I, could under- I wish I could understand you know what? my language. I'm pretty sure. Sure. Now I'm thinking about this. That was premature lockage. I was close. Yeah, premature though. lockage. There's a pill for that. <laughs> Four out of five. Everything I can think of would not be locked in. <laughs> there it is. Darn it. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong now. I really want to look at the keyboard. Kels, do you want an easy mode? If you got one on you, I'll take it. It's in South America. Oh my god! Definitely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. I'm mad at myself. I'm Kazakhstan is not in South America. <laughs> <laughs> I I so I look at my keyboard. I'm sure, pretty sure it's this one letter. I'm I'm wrong on. I'm locked in. Okay, Andy, what do you have? Andy put Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey. And I know that the, when you say QWERTY, obviously you got the E and the Y. Uh, and, and I'm pretty K, sure T, the K is on the middle row. The K is wrong. That's what I was thinking about. The K, K is, is the one that's wrong. With a Q. With a Q. The dang quiz knows. <laughs> hey, one letter off, not bad at, with like a millisecond of thought. Devo. Peru. And Kells. Peru. Yep, there it is. Peru is correct. Oh, I'm still in it, guys. Allison Line, here I come. Question three. What language is spoken by Tuck and Roll, the acrobatic pill bugs from A Bug's Life? It is the most spoken oh. Uralic language in the world. Ooh. There goes the Allison Line. There it goes. I locked in. Boy, I wish I knew what that word meant. <laughs> Andy, you... If you want to take an easy I'm, mode, I can I can no, make one for uh, you. You're thinking about it too hard, Andy. Just... All right, I'm just locking in. I'm locking in too. Okay. Let's see. Devo? I said Chechen. Okay. Kels? I like Devo's answer, but I said Hungarian. And Andy? So is... Uralic Europe? It's near the Ural Mountains. Oh, Ural Mountains. Okay. So I had no idea what Uralic meant. So I just stuck with the most, what I think is probably the most spoken language, which would be Mandarin Chinese. Would it have helped if I included in the Uralic languages Finnish and Estonian? 
Oh, okay. probably not. Because Kels is right. The answer is Hungarian. <laughs> oh. What led you to Hungarian, Kels? Ural Mountains. Okay. The there question you led you to the answer. Is that, that's how <laughs> this is supposed to work. Huh. I meant to try that strategy sometime. <laughs> it's cutting edge. It's it's wow. daring, so you but it seems a, to work. You pay attention, and then you uh-huh. answer the question from the words well, in the question. Hungary huh. actually isn't really close to the Urals, but it worked. I think it's entirely within Isn't that? Russia. Maybe some in Kazakhstan. But I could be wrong. The hell am I thinking about? The Carpathians. I don't know. <laughs> you <You're> very <laughs> confident with the, with the, you, you just gotta it, get though. confidence is key. <laughs> I, I was looking something up and all of a sudden I just realized that Davo said Carpathians and I'm like, I don't I don't know where that's going. Nowhere. It's just <laughs> There's a name for my pain, and it is Carpathia. <laughs> Isn't that the ship that came in to rescue the Titanic survivors? It is. Sure. Carpathia. Great. <laughs> <laughs> are you is, are you saying that's an analogy for this game here, Andy? His anger is delicious. I'm I'm floating on a door. I'm kicking <laughs> kicking Jack off. Get out of here. <laughs> it doesn't look like okay, anybody's well, trying to get on your door, Dave. Nope. nope. <laughs> I'm, I'm slowly freezing to death right now. Let's finish nope. regulation with a simple question. Everybody else is already in the <laughs> lifeboat. Yeah, thanks. Neil, pile on, please. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> question four What country is the world's most populous monarchy? He said it was a simple question, so I'm going to get it catastrophically wrong. <laughs> you me to come on. I feel like this is a trick question, oh, no. but I'm locked in. It's not a trick. You know, it occurred to me that there could be read a couple of ways. It's by population, not by size, not by area. I said, what country is the world's most populous monarchy? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Never mind. So it really couldn't be taken... More than one way, <laughs> unless you're considering like the population of like sea otters or something like that. <laughs> wow! But presumably, I you're talking about human sea beings. otter on my paper, you <laughs> jerk. You know, it actually it might also it might be the same answer to both questions. It's possible. All um, right, I'm locked in. The God. easy mode is which Uralic country <laughs> <laughs> as a I'm monarchy. Also the home of this weird ass grape that <laughs> <laughs> and its regions are referred to as cantons. <laughs> Kels? Uh, um I said Saudi Arabia. Andy. Technically it's 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 still the United Kingdom, isn't it? And Dave. I said Saudi Arabia. Andy, if I had said that you have I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, come on. Do, it, do it again, do it again. I don't want to interrupt it. A doctor has recommended that you have a sweep. Beautiful. It's a, well, um, question. Constitutional monarchy, but still a monarchy. I did say which country. Now, if I had left out country and I said, what is the world's most populous monarchy? Uh, Great Britain might have fit that bill, but there's some United Thailand. Kingdom. It's Thailand. It's Thailand. most populous monarchy is Japan. Oh, Japan still. It is a. They have an emperor. Yeah, it's a constitutional monarchy that is virtually not. That was a diabolical <sighs> question. That easy question. I thought that they okay. Yeah, I thought that they, they recent, ended there did recently. Did they recently have a princess abdicate to marry a commoner? I think mm. that was Thailand. That was a Disney cartoon, Devo. You often get social studies tangled. mixed up it with Disney tangled. cartoons. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like there was a, uh, it wasn't a princess. I thought it was uh, a male who decided he didn't. Oh, be, okay. But I, I could be wrong. But yeah, Andy, the, if he totaled up the Commonwealth countries, then Charles would be the head of the largest monarchy. But right. if you don't include like, well, mostly Canada and South Africa, then the UK by itself as a country isn't 
bigger yeah. than Japan. No, I missed that part about being specific to a country. Yeah. Mm. Well, at the end of regulation, what are the scores, Neil? Our scores are Deva with 83 points. Not the lowest score we've ever had. Kels had 118, and Andy had 121. Ooh. Hello, ladlers. We here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast are thrilled to announce that we have merch, t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, mouse pads, a bottle of Crystal Pepsi, and a 1986 Buick Regal sitting on what the kids would say, dubs. I mean, the works. Go to brainladleshop.com and give our beautiful new shop a once over. Show your love of trivia and help support the show by locking in on your favorite swag. And remember our sales motto, if you want it, we got it. If we ain't got it, we're going to get it. So you better get it while the getting's good. Allison Lane. Allison Lane. <laughs> I, have no I don't, faith I don't in think it abilities. counts if you get there in the... In the, in the uh... <laughs> Wild card style. How was that for a for a segue? That was a it's nice very segue. Nice. It's smooth. <laughs> all right. Tonight's sudden death round is all about etymology. And no, Andy, I won't be asking you about bugs in this category. Uh, I'm gonna give you a question about the origin of a word, and you tell oh, me God. what word I'm looking for. Everybody knows <laughs> I'm good with words. So paying attention in French class may help you in this round. Crap. Everybody ready to begin? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Question one. From the old French for dead pledge, though it may feel literal when you sign one, it most likely refers to the death of the deal when the debt is paid or the borrower fails to pay. Locked in. Locked in? Locked in. Andy. Mortgage? David. Mortgage. Kells. Such a weird word to write out. Mortgage. It just looks like I spelled it wrong. Yeah. Mortgage. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so weird. Yep. Mort. As in mortality and mortuary. Mm-hmm. For dead, it is mortgage. Hmm. Okay. Question number two. This disease gets its name from the literal Italian for bad air because it was once thought to be caused by the foul-smelling air of certain marshy areas. Oh, This I know. (laughs) Locked in. Locked in. From Italian? Italian. No. When I think of bad air, I think of Aaron Rodgers' passing game this year. One great. Did you say bad air? Bad air. I thought you said ad air. And I was like, hmm. Bad air. <laughs> it's just about to say ass. <laughs> 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 but bad air, okay. Um, locked in. Devo. Malaria. Kells. Malaria. And Andy. Malaria. Yep. Mal is bad. As in malaise and malady, it is malaria. Okay, question three. In ancient Rome, those seeking political office wore bright white togas, often enhanced with powdered chalk, to signal their intentions in civic affairs. From the Latin for white-robed, we get this word meaning one aspiring to office. Locked in. I don't know. I'm locked in. Locked in. Kels? Candidate. Andy. Candidate. And David. Candidate. Yep. Candir means to shine, as in the words candle, chandelier, and incandescence. It is candidate. (laughs) That's twice, Kels. You just believe in yourself. Heart of the cards. (laughs) (laughs) 
let's move out of the romance Kels, what languages. am I thinking right now? Let's <laughs> see if that works. What am I, uh, that you hope I get the next one wrong? Yep. Wow, that's weird. Crazy. <laughs> Question four. Today in American staple, this condiment has likely origins in Chinese and Malay words for a certain type of fish sauce. Europeans originally tried to replicate the deep umami flavors with mushrooms, but eventually landed on the current formulation in the 1800s in the United States. Locked in. I don't like it. I got to. I don't like it. Locked in. This is the first one I'm super sure of because I heard the story recently. Was it on NPR? Quite possibly. <laughs> All right, I'm locked in. Was that everybody? I'm locked in as well. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't know if I say that or not. Andy, what do you have? Ketchup. Oh, boy. Devo? Ketchup. And Kels? Ketchup. Ugh. Yep, in, in Malay, it was ketchup. Oh. Huh. Chinese was very similar. Yes, it is ketchup. And interestingly, we were talking about Jonathan Swift earlier in his... 1730 poem in a 1730 poem i don't have the name on me he actually was the first person to spell ketchup with as a c-a-t-s-u-p so if you hate that spelling like i do you can blame jonathan swift <laughs> it's not ketchup <laughs> that's crazy it's dang irish <laughs> okay let's stick with fish here by the way of old french This fish likely derives its name from the Latin for to leap. I have no. I've got to guess. I got. I'm I'm locked in. This matters. (laughs) I'm I'm locked in. I don't feel good. Dave, same. I said trout. Kells. Because of the um not pronounced letters in it. I said salmon. And oh. Andy. And I too went with salmon. <laughs> yes, if you know to leap, it would be salir, which we, mm. by corruption, we got salmon. I was between salmon and trout. Mm. Well, you picked right. Another mm. related word is uh, somersault, which is derived from a corruption oh. of supra wow. and saltus, meaning to leap oh. over. Did uh. not know that. Well, Devo, I'm sorry, but we must go on. I crossed the Allison line in my heart. I know it doesn't go on the official score sheet, <laughs> but I crossed the Allison line. In our hearts. Yeah. Okay, for Kells and Andy, let's go to question six. Ultimately, from the Turkish for turban, The Dutch, German, and French for this flower all acknowledge its resemblance to the headwear. Hmm. Flower? Flower. Well, I'm locked in. It looks like a turban. But it doesn't effing matter! (laughs) I'm locked in? (laughs) I have no idea. Um, This kind of makes sense. mm, I'm bad. Um, I'm locked in. I don't know. Kels? I just had a tulip. God damn it. Andy. (laughs) (laughs) That's three. It's a tulip. I'm almost positive. It makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Yep. Um, Mm. In Dutch and German, it's tulpe. In French, it's tulip. It is the tulip. (laughs) It's uncanny. You know why why I picked tulip. Just let me win one. Why'd you pick tulip? Because it starts with a T U like turkey. There you go. Hey. The word Admittedly, Cal, I think that's how I left the tulip first. <laughs> but then when I thought of the tulip, I realized it does look a lot like a turban. <laughs> mm. Question seven. From melee, meaning man of the woods, this word refers to a certain primate that inhabits the rainforests of Borneo and Sumatra. Mm. I might be done here. Uh, it's me too. Which I know means it. you get the W. I'm like that too. I haven't seen these questions, so I'm getting to play along a little bit here. Are you kicking our ass like normal? No, I would have missed. I would have missed the fish. I'm mm. locked in. 
I was going to say anchovy. Andy, what do you have? Orangutan. Kels? <laughs> I say Yeti. David, what were you going to say? Orangutan. That's what Correct I Correct answer said is orangutan. Oh, thank Andy. you. Biological Andy's anthropology. In it. <sighs> All right. I wasn't even thinking about that. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's keep Gosh. going, Andy. All right. Question eight. In 17th century India, this word referred to a, quote, learned Hindu who had extensive knowledge of Sanskrit history, science, law, or religion. By the 19th century, it gained a broader meaning as any learned man. Today, it is often a talking head on t- cable television. Oh, I think I know this. Yep. Oh, I'm pretty sure I know this one, too. Not a panelist, not a specialist, not... <laughs> oh, I'm just drawing a blank. All right, I'm... Well, I guess I don't have to lock in. All I could come up with is guru... But you don't call a talkie head on TV a guru. Can I can I answer? Me, me. Kills. <laughs> Dave, you want to go at the same time? Nah, you got it. You got it. No, no, you got it. Pundit. Yeah, that's what oh, I was going to go with. Pundit that is makes correct. more sense than guru. Damn. Well, that wraps it up. Yeah, our final scores are Dava with 123. Uh, Kells 178 and Andy 191. Andy, Andy. yes, I have a one one in a while. Thank you. Hey, good job, buddy. Good good win, man. Good questions. Let's run through those last couple real quick. Yeah, I've got some more if you want. Please, I have two proper and then maybe one more. Um, question nine. And earlier in the show, I was trying not to laugh when Devo was saying this, but biblically. (laughs) This man was the son of Cush, and Genesis refers to him as, quote, a great hunter before the Lord. Nimrod. Today, through an association (laughs) with a certain animated lagomorph, his name refers to a dim-witted, stupid, or clumsy person. Robin. (laughs) Asshole. Wow. It is Nimrod. Nimrod. You know, actually, looking this one up, Daffy Duck actually called Elmer Fudd a Nimrod. Mm-hmm. About three years before Bugs Bunny ever said it, and Bugs Bunny mm. only ever said it to Yosemite Sam. Okay, hmm. so we've all so got Dav- a false memory of a Mandela of a Bugs Mandela Bunny effect calling of Bugs calling mm. Elmer a Nimrod. Okay, question ten. According to Tarantino, it's quote the only liquor so good they named a color after it. Named after the chief monastery of the Carthusian order in the French Alps, who produces an herbal liquor of the same name, this term was first used as a color in 1884. Wow. It's been on the show before. Long, long time ago. No. I know what color it is. I can't remember what it's called. Kels, if I gave you the movie where that quote comes from, would it help? Maybe. Death Proof. I've never seen Death Proof. Neither have I. Yeah, I think I'm... I'm lost. I would have have missed this one for sure. Neil, what's your guess? Uh, Oh, uh, Chartreuse. Yep, it is Chartreuse. (laughs) Chartreuse. It's fancy enough to be a drink. Yep, Chartreuse. And then I got one more, just a little fact nugget. Yeah, yeah. Kind of went along with our last question of regulation, talking about Japan. So in 1835, when Commodore Matthew Matthew Perry arrived in Japan, he demanded to speak with, quote, a dignitary of highest rank in the empire. Not knowing that the Japanese emperor was merely a figurehead, he was instead met by the shogun, who adopted this Japanese word to denote his importance to foreigners. Today, this term often refers to someone with tremendous wealth and, by extension, tremendous power. Bezos? And to a certain generation, maybe they built roller coasters. Tycoon? Tycoon. Oh, Oh, wow. Did not know that. Neither did I. Yeah, and it quickly went across the Pacific to... America, because I think by the 1860s, Abraham Lincoln was using that word. Mm. Wow. Fascinating. Interesting. Very. 
But Ian, that was a fantastic quiz, buddy. I know I gave you a lot questions. of grief, but it was mainly because I'm a ninjit. So, <laughs> or a Nimrod, if you will. Or a Nimrod, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> but thank you very much, Ian. Well, thank you, Dave. It was fun to write, fun to put that together, fun to close out the year finishing off those questions. Yeah. So I believe we got to dip into the old mailbag. We got some uh, we got some letters in the mailbag there, Dave. Yay. So let me get that out here. Here we are. All right. Letter number one comes from Patreon uh, Ladler, whose handle is Trish Dishes. Yay. Hi, Trish uh, Dishes. Trish Dishes asks, how did you all meet? Well, I worked. Well, Andy and Kelv- Kelvin and I worked at... Mullins Library on the University of Arkansas campus for a very long time together. Mm -hmm. And I tangentially know Neil through D&D. We used to play a DD and d game together. And Neil was looking for somebody to go to a a trivia night who knew sports because Neil doesn't know sports. And I said, I know sports. I'll come. And then Neil and I got our heads together and decided, hey, let's do a podcast. And I said, hey, I know I know some folks who would be good on that show. How about Kells? So it was the meeting of two disparate friend groups coming together for this wonderful thing. It's been a lot of fun. I, I would like to share real quick my introduction to Davo and Kells. Uh, we were all working <laughs> at the University of Arkansas, and uh, I had been working in a different part of campus, and I got transferred to the Mullins Library where David and Kells already worked. And... I would pass through the mail room where Davo and Kells were often at. And they were always having these animated conversations. They seemed like a lot of fun. And I was trying to figure out a way to strike up a conversation. And I was noticing like the way Davo in particular had his office decorated with uh, all comic book and sci-fi stuff. And I had just started watching the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. And so all I did is I came in there one day. I was like, hey, you guys seem like, the kind of guys I could ask this, but should I keep watching the reboot of Battlestar Galactica? And holy cow, they just erupted for like a half hour on (laughs) why I should stop watching that now. And I realized (laughs) friends, friends was boom. (laughs) (laughs) I questioned, uh, we got uh, two letters uh, from uh, Patreon Ladler who goes by Houdini. Oh, hi Houdini. Um, being new, I'd just ask what the connection between you all is, which I think we just answered, since it sounds like you've all you're all sort of spread out, and how you got into trivia. Neil, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, I like I try to I, I kind of like being the smartest person in the room, and so I thought I would see if I actually was by going to trivia, and it turns out definitely not because <laughs> uh, so much of trivia has things that I don't know about. And so that led me to, uh, I asked some, I asked some of some friends, uh, if anybody was interested in trivia and they were like, no, you should ask Davo. And I'm like, Davo really? Cause he doesn't really seem that. Wow. I was wow. hesitant at first, <laughs> <laughs> but boy, was I pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Nice, nicely <laughs> saved. Yeah. David, I think it was Kai that actually recommended I, I talked to you. Yeah, about. it was Kai. And one last letter. Uh, Houdini, after he wrote that first letter, wrote me a second letter uh, nine minutes later. And my follow-up question would be, when are we getting another After Dark episode? The Patreons demand it. Oh, oh hell. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick us away. There's a high twisting hang time spiral. Oh, man. Big Daddy, I think I could answer this for you. I might have to drink before that one. So that'll be my drink episode. There is another episode episode in the pipeline, so to speak. Why are you so ready with this now? Just, Just like flipping a switch. Yeah. Does somebody want to explain that to our non-patrons who have no idea what we're talking about? So if you want to be a Patreon ladler and, <laughs> and uh, donate money to Patreon, we do special episodes. And one of our episodes was uh, Patreon After Dark, 
which was, um, well, you'll have to spend the money and find out. But it was fun. It was not fun. <laughs> it was disturbing. <laughs> it was the most I disturbing 30 like minutes it. of my life. <laughs> oh, I know you like it, Neil. See? That. Mm. It's disturbing. Mm. So, mm. Ian. Mm. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you're a patron, correct? I'm a patron. How do you feel about the After Dark episode? You know, everybody who's not a ladler, you need to pay them some money so you can hear Andy for 30 <laughs> minutes. It's worth your money. What's wrong with you people? Just remember, this is where your money goes, to Andy. <laughs> 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 and on that note <laughs> so from but all of us here oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead Andy uh, go ahead Ian I'm sorry <laughs> I was going to say in all seriousness the bonus content is great if you like listening to these guys riff and have some fun themes they're a little shorter episodes but you get a lot more content and it pays to support people who are doing good work so if you like them give them some money well yeah. said sir so thank you. So from all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, this is your MC Davo with Kells. I just want you all to know that I love you, or as we say, I'm, where I'm from, uh, eep, op, or ah, ah. Wow. That means Aww. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. So long, little brainers. Ian. Thanks, you Nimrods. <laughs> <laughs> and the sensei Neil I asked uh, LB5K okay to pick something random and this is what he came up with I like big butts and I cannot yep. lie you other brothers <laughs> can't deny that when yep. a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing go. in your mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. I don't think that was spring. random actually I think he, he just likes that clip oh <laughs> and you have issues with me <laughs> <laughs> signing off <laughs>the speaker in this room just kicked on. I don't know how I got, I had it turned off. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think Wendy. <laughs> I don't know how she did that. But she, she was turning, we have, we have speakers in every room of the house. And I think she was intending to turn the speaker off in the West Wing and the rest of the speakers on. And she did the opposite. She just turned the speaker on in here. So let me just. I like how you get me. Your house get is make... so big. It has no, wings. It has yeah, not it's, at all. It does. It, He's got yeah, the wings, no. and I he gives me crap for having a compound. It's not, yeah. We we have a we have a funky ranch house that the that the east and west side uh, look identical. And to keep it straight, early on Wendy and I started referring to it as the east wing and the west wing. <laughs> all right, try that again. Sorry, guys. No, you're good. Do I need to count again? I thought it was quiet before. No, I think we're for good. You. Okay. We, we're right. good unless Davo needs the... the, 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 the you you uh, want a, a soft up. count, Davo? Is Davo there? Oh, God, oh, we Devo. lost Davo. <laughs> well, I guess it's my show now. <laughs> but no, Hello. hang on. And, well, no, Davo's dead. It's my show. That's not <laughs> the way it works. <laughs> there can only be one Highlander. Davo's gone now. Dave I'm back. back. I'm back. I'm back. I had to re <laughs> my mic came unplugged. Uh, crazily enough. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll, Welcome I'll to the world of professional <laughs> podcasting, Ian. <laughs> Whoa! Wait a minute. Hold on a quick second. Something is weird because everybody's like really loud now. That's because the shrooms are kicking in. Davo has nothing. Wow. To do with Okay, I told ready. you not to take them at six thirty. Right, we've talked about this <laughs> over and over again. Maybe we should do Find that instead of another time. drunk episode. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Mm -hmm. The shrooms no. episode. <laughs>
<laughs> you, okay. you don't want that. You do not want that. <laughs> It'll just be we weeping in a corner. What's your answer, David? <laughs> the walls! <laughs> the walls! <laughs> Thurl Ravenscroft is the uncredited performer of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, and the iconic voice of Kellogg's Tony the Tiger from 19... Oh, there's my dog. Hi. <laughs> oh, get Hi, out puppers. Here. My dog, <laughs> Hubble, is a barker. You mean you wrote a whole astronomy category and have a dog named Hubble? I do. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, what That's do you know? Weird. And, you know, funny enough, my next dog is going to be Tycho. <laughs> <laughs> Best dog name ever. You're not going to do anything weird with the nose, are you? Completely independent of the show, yes. <laughs> yeah, he, I'll get him a, a little, little bronze nose. <laughs> it's been quiet here for two days. Oh, that's on your end, Cal's? Yeah, it's been quite. It's seven thirty, and now my neighborhood comes alive. <laughs> it's ice on the roads. I've heard more cars in the last thirty minutes than I have in two days. We have not seen cars in a while. We have had mail service for a few days, or trash service. We're on our own. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound very dire. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no. We have we have about three weeks of gravy uh, left at this point. Why do you have my, that much? My dearest Clementine, <laughs> I write you with only three weeks supply of gravy. <laughs> well played. Well played, guest. <laughs> I'm getting to where I'm decoratively uh, designing my X's on my paper. Oh, oops, sorry, I thought I pressed the button. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, those, those tires so are slick. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm dealing with the cold, and I, I really thought I'd press the button. <laughs> so yeah, I, just like, I blow my nose, I see the red bar on my screen go way up, like, oh, shit. <laughs> I did not press that button. The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions, all rights reserved. Sure, come get this baby.